I'm April Plank, and thank you for joining me today for a reformer workout. Today I'm going to be using one prop, and that is the block. If you don't have a block, I'll show you some modifications to do without the block. I have my reformer set up with a foot bar down to begin with and two red springs. So let's go ahead and lay down and get started. So I'm going to start with that block between my knees, and I'm just going to put it lengthwise between the knees, take my hands and grab onto the pegs, and just let my elbows open up and my shoulders relax down my back. Give that block a nice little hug with the knees, and then inhale, let the legs go all the way over to the right. And as I go to the right, I'm keeping my left shoulder down, and then exhale, bring it back up to the center. And then let's go to the other side. So inhaling towards the left, keeping the right shoulder down, and then exhale back to the center. And you're just gonna keep going side to side, just warming up through the obliques, warming up through the back. And if you're like me, you might get a little back cracks, which always feel really good. Just loosening everything up and getting ready to work today. So remembering those inhales are nice and deep through the nose. And then those exhales are nice and deep through those pierced lips. So every time you're inhaling, you're filling the lungs, filling the ribs. And with every exhale, you're pulling that belly button deeper to the spine, drawing the abdominals tight, drawing that corset in tight. You're putting a little pressure on the, um, holding onto the pegs, almost like you're drawing the pegs apart. So that's gonna help you keep your shoulders down, your chest a little bit, open, getting a stretch through the front of the body as we start our workout. It'll also help you keep your shoulders down and back as well. So we'll finish off with the left side, doing one more on the left, and then coming back to the center. Now take that block between your hands, bring your hands straight up to the ceiling, holding that block. Push a little bit into the block to activate through your lats, so it's almost like you're drawing your armpits down to your waist. Your legs are glued together in tabletop, and we'll start with a single leg stretch. Take your right leg and reach it out long over the foot bar, and then switch it with your left. So you're just alternating right and left, keeping your pelvis nice and still. Nothing's really moving at all from the head to the tailbone, and I'm just working on isolating that movement through the low body, keeping my pelvis stable and really steady. I like to exhale as I press one leg out, and then exhale and press the other leg out. So just a little gentle pressure into that block. The more you push into the block, the more you're going to feel those abdominals actually engage, your lats engage, which are those big muscles in the back of the body. So you're just giving a little pressure, a little hug into that block. Let's go one more to the right, one more to the left. And then we're going to change the block. So bring the legs back to tabletop. Now I'm going to take the block on my right um, front of the leg, and then I'm going to take the right hand pinky side and glue it into the block. So I'm pushing the block into my knee and into my hand. My left leg's going to reach out for the single leg stretch, the same thing we did, and my left arm's going to go a little bit forward to the shoulder block, and then I'm going to bring it back in. So the more I can push my right and left leg, or my right hand and my left right leg into the block, the more I'm going to feel the obliques engage. Good. So we're not moving too big, but you're getting a lot of work here, warming up through the core. Now that left leg is going in and out, bending and straightening, and the left arm's just reaching straight over the head and back in. And if you want a little bit more challenge, that left leg's going lower towards the floor, and if you want less challenge, that left leg is going higher towards the ceiling. Good. But don't lose that connection with the block. So really push deeply into that block. Now instead of this bend and stretch, keep your left leg straight the next time. Kick it straight up to the ceiling and then reach it straight down. Again, does not have to be big. Just moving at a range of motion that feels good for you. Exhaling as you lift. Inhaling as you lower. Good. Keep that connection of the block, pushing that arm into the block, pushing your knee into the block. Now, if you didn't have a block, you can easily just do this pushing a hand 
and the knee together. You just want some kind of a pressure and by pushing those two together, you're feeling a little bit more abdominal work. So again, the block is an optional tool that I love to work with, but if you don't have one, you can definitely do everything I'm doing today without it. Let's go one more time and then we're gonna switch sides. So take that block, place it on the left leg, take the left pinky um, side of the hand against the block, and then our right leg is gonna reach out, right arm over the head, and then pull it back in. Inhale as you extend, exhale, pull in. Good, again, I feel that pressure of the right, excuse me, the left arm pushing into the block, my left knee pushing into the block. That's engaging my entire core. Everything is on fire, even though it's not moving and it doesn't look like much, I definitely am feeling it and I'm hoping that you're feeling this too. Let's go two more times with the bend and stretch. And then keep that leg straight. We'll kick it up to the ceiling and lower it down. So big sweeping kick up and back down. And I'm really trying hard to keep my tailbone grounded, to keep my pelvis still, and just to have that motion coming from my leg and the arm. Last four, really using that block, or again, if you don't have the block, you're pushing the hand into the knee. One more to go. Good, and then come all the way in. So we're gonna now place the block between your ankles. Again, if you don't have the block, just it's an option, you don't have to use it. So you're gonna have your squeeze in the block, or if you don't have a block, your legs are squeezing together. Take your hands and grab back onto the pegs. On the inhale, I'm gonna send both legs out long. On the exhale, I'm gonna pull it back to tabletop. Now, if I'm starting to feel it in my back, I can always bring my legs a little bit higher so they don't have to go as low as you possibly can. If you start to arch through the ribs or pop through the ribs, then you know maybe you've gone a little too low and you need to send those legs a little higher. Good, so you're pressing the legs nice and long and pulling in. Feel free to keep your head down, holding onto those pegs. Option number two, you can lift the head, neck, and shoulders, taking the hands behind the head, looking towards that belly button as the legs go in and out. At any point this feels too much on the neck, go ahead and drop the head back down for me and continue with the head down. I want you to do two more times, bend and straighten. And then the next time the legs are straight, hold it, lift them straight up to the ceiling, lower down, down, down. So you're exhaling as you lift, inhaling as you lower. Strong breath sends the legs up, big inhale sends the legs down. And you're working at a range of motion that feels good for you. If you have that block, squeeze into it. That's gonna activate the entire inseam of the leg Feeling the inner thighs work even deeper. Three more to go. Last two. Here's your last one. Nice job, you guys. Go ahead and relax. Grab back onto the pegs. One more thing to go. So your legs are going to be up to the ceiling. You're going to pull yourself into a rollover. So I'm gonna work my abdominals and start to peel my spine up one vertebrae at a time. When I've gone as far as I can, my weight is in my shoulders, not in my neck. I'm gonna send the legs straight up to the ceiling and then slowly melt my spine back down one vertebrae at a time, sending the hips back towards the mat. So you're taking an inhale and then you're gonna exhale, peel yourself up. <sighs> Extend all the way up on the inhale and then exhale and slowly roll it back down. So everyone's a little different, so you'll just roll up as high as you comfortably can. You don't wanna be putting any strain in the neck. You definitely don't wanna be putting any weight in the neck. So just go up as high as comfortable for you. And you always wanna to listen to your body and do a workout that feels appropriate for how you're feeling today. 
Now, if I want more challenge, when I come down, I can even send my legs farther away. So I can do my roll up into my jackknife or my roll over into my jackknife. And then when the hips come down, I could even send the legs a little bit farther away for more challenge. So if you want to try that option, you can. We're just going to do two more of these roll overs with your jackknife. One more to go, so just lifting those hips one vertebrae at a time, going as high as comfortable for you, and then slowly rolling it all the way down. Go ahead and bend the knees into the chest. Use your legs and just roll yourself up. Now I'm gonna put my foot bar up. And just a reminder, we're on two red springs, so we're set up for our footwork. And I'm putting my foot bar up in mid position. I like to use my block as a pillow, but again, if you don't have a block, your option would be to lift your headrest and just use your headrest as a pillow. So I'm gonna line my right ear up on the block. My um, right hand's gonna grab for the, um, right here for the, whatever that's called, <laughs> and your left hand's gonna be here on the um, shoulder block. So your right leg's gonna be straight under the foot bar, and we're gonna start with that pushing on the left leg. I always do that, I teach so many times probably a thousands of classes and I forget the names. It'll come back to me at some point. Good, so you're inhaling as you press, exhaling as you resist. Really focus on that full press and extension through the leg. So I wanna think of creating a straight line. If there was a wall behind me, my shoulders would be stacked against the wall, my hips would be stacked against the wall, and I'd have this little space for this little mouse to run through. So what that means is this top hip isn't dropping down. So if you can see that where my top hip's dropping down, I'm not gonna get as much work there. So I wanna try to push my top hip towards the foot bar, keeping that length through both sides of the waistline. Good, just do that two more times. And then I want you to come halfway in for a little pulse. So hold it in the belly of the muscle and just little tiny presses, like one inch up, one inch down, squeezing through that leg. You guys got it, four more, and three, and two, and one. Go all the way up. Now once you're at the top, lift your heel up in a releve, and now keep going, bending all the way in and out. We have three different variations, so this is our second set on this side. We'll do one more set after this, and then we'll move on to the next exercise. So again, I'm continuing to think about hips level, shoulders, hips stacked, everything in alignment, reaching that leg all the way straight, bending it all the way back in. Full range of motion through that left leg. Again, it's totally fine to go all the way out and squeeze to full extension. What you don't wanna do is go all the way out, lock and pop the joint. So I don't want to be doing any popping or any jerking, but I definitely can do a full press out and in. Next time I want you to hold it halfway, back to those little pulses. Give me eight, seven, use that breath, four, and three, and two, and one. Go all the way out, set the heel back down. Last one to go, turn the toes to the ceiling. This time when you bend in, your knee goes up, so you have a little bit of turnout. And we're gonna really kick in more through that glute med so the side of the leg is working here. So really squeeze as you go out, squeeze it out, exhale, release in. Good. Hopefully those legs are starting to warm up for you. I know my legs feel nice and warm. I'm gonna do just two more, last set of pulses, and then we'll move into some arms and the strap work. So one more here to go, and then I want you to come halfway, hold it here and give me those little pulses, just tight and tiny. Four, and three, and two, and one. Go all the way out, and bring it all the way in. Good, now I'm alone, so I've gotta change my own spring weight. So I'm gonna come on up and put a blue spring on take your two reds off. So now you're left with just one blue, and then you'll lay right back down. This time your knees are stacked, one on top of the other. Take that strap into the top hand, reach it right out in front of you. I'm still holding the peg. See, I remembered finally the name. Holding the peg with the right hand, 
And now my left arm is going to pull all the way down to my hip and then bring it back. Now as I'm pulling that arm, I want to set my shoulder down my back. And so what that means, I'm using these long lat muscles to hold my shoulder still. So I'm really keeping my shoulder back and down as my arm moves. So it's almost like my shoulder sliding down and away from my ear as I'm doing the exercise and I'm keeping it down the whole time. I still have that little mouse house too. So my hips are stacked one on top of the other even. Good. See how long you can reach that left arm. Try to reach it all the way to the foot bar and back. Now reach it one more time and hold it. Bend the elbow for a tricep. Push and straighten it out. And bend and press and straighten it out. And you've got four more. And three. And two, last one to go. Nice job. All right, take that strap. We're gonna put it on the top foot and then send your foot all the way to the foot bar. So it's almost like you're standing. So you have a straight line from the crown of the head all the way through that foot, nice and long line. And then you're gonna pendulum kick. Bring that leg forward for a swing and then kick and extend it back. So it's a pendulum swing forward and squeeze the glute to send it back. Now when I'm coming forward, I'm coming just to about hip height. And then when I'm going back, I'm going almost to where I'm, where I'm standing on the foot bar and maybe a little bit back into a little glute extension. What I don't want to see happen is the movement through my spine. So I shouldn't be flexing or extending my spine at any point. It's really just this nice movement from the leg. Good. Just doing that pendulum kick two more times. And then the next time the leg stays to the foot bar, you're going to turn your toes up to the ceiling, bend your knee in froggy position, and then push it back out. So we're in a little bit of a turnout. Still trying to keep my hips stacked. My top hip's going to roll out a little bit, and that's fine. But try not to roll back too much here. Bending in on the inhale, pushing out and extending on the exhale. Let's go three more here. Good. Next time you're out, stay there. Turn the toe back to the front. So now you're neutral. We're going to go into some circles. So you'll go forward to hip height, up to the ceiling, and then pull it down to the foot bar. So I like to think of just stirring in that femur, that leg bone in the hip socket, really working on lubricating that whole hip joint working on mobility, flexibility through the hips. And hopefully this feels nice. It does for me, so hopefully it does for you. Really good work today. Two more to go. Last one here. When you get to the foot bar, I want you to switch the direction. So once you're down, go up first. Then bring it forward and kick it back. So it's just a lift up to the ceiling, forward to hip height, and pressing back to the foot bar. Good. So we'll get you nice and warmed up on this left side, and then we'll get ready to move on to the right side. Just a few more repetitions before we move on. So this will be your last two. All right, one more to go. Good. And then go ahead and bend that knee in. Just take that foot out of the strap, rest it down. Okay, so just a few changes for the other side. So I want you to come up, take your blue off, and to put your two reds on. So I'm going to put my two outside reds on. I'm going to take my blue off, and then I'm going to turn around and do the opposite side. 
So this time I've got my left ear on the block or the headrest if you don't have a block. My hips are stacked one on top of the other. My shoulders are stacked. I've got that little mouse house. So again, I'm not letting this hip go forward. I'm trying to push it out and keep that strength through the spine. Right foot on the foot bar, left leg reaching long. Here we go. Press it all the way out and pull it back in. Now this top hand can be here. This is kind of a good reminder to keep pushing that hip down so you can keep that hand there or you can rest the hand on the shoulder and block, just trying to keep any tension out of the neck. So you don't want to be over straining or overworking areas that should be relaxing here. Really focus on that heel to glute connection, connection. So you're pushing your right heel down into the foot bar and extending all the way, really squeezing that bottom at the top. Do that one more time all the way out. And I want you to come halfway in. Give me little tiny pulses, 10. Last four and three, two and one. All the way out, second set of three. You're gonna lift your heel up, come into that releve and here we go, bending in, push it away. So like I always tell my clients, when you're going out, um, you're breathing in. When you're coming in, you're breathing out. But that's just a um, suggestion. So if you find yourself breathing the opposite way, it's no big deal. The breath is really there to support and facilitate you in the motion. So if it feels more comfortable for you to breathe the opposite way, that's totally fine. The breath is a tool for you to use, not a rule for you to follow. So as long as you're breathing, the breath is helping you, then breathe where it's comfortable. Now one more, take it halfway in and hold it and give me those little pulses, just tiny little pulses. Squeezing that leg muscle, really working in the belly of the muscle. We've got four and three, two and one. All the way out, one last exercise here. Put the heel back down, turn your toes up to the ceiling and then you're gonna bend into your frog. Push and extend it back out. So nice external rotation, getting that little bit of flexibility and stretch through the front of the leg, and then working deeper right here through that glute med, the side of the bottom. Still keep that mouse house. Try to keep those obliques active. Doing a really good job. We are almost done, guys. Last two. One more full press all the way out. Bring it halfway in. Let's hold it. Little pulses. Four, three, two, and one. All the way out, bring it back in. All right, let's take that weight down again. So let's put on the blue. Take off your two red. We are left with one blue. You're laying on your side. Your right hand's gonna grab the strap, bring it right out in front of you and then take that shoulder, slide it down. So you want to, again, shoulder down your back before you even move, and then the arm goes straight to the hip and then forward. So if I can work on keeping my shoulder back and down, I'm going to be able to engage my back better. That's also going to help improve my posture because I'm not allowing my shoulder to round forward during this exercise. I'm encouraging my shoulder to stay back during this exercise. Good. I'm also not flinging the carriage around. It's kind of easy to start letting the springs take over, letting momentum take over, but I'm trying to control the motion as if I'm moving through thick molasses. Now the next time you're down to the side, you're going to stay there, tricep, bend the elbow, and then push it out and extend. Bend the elbow and push it and extend. Good, I'm keeping my shoulder back and down. Three to go. Last one here. 
All right, let's take that strap and put it on the top foot. Moving on to footwork, you're gonna push that leg all the way out. So again, don't allow yourself to do this position. So if you notice from the back, it's easier to see where my hip is hiking and I'm just letting my whole body rest on the carriage. I'm gonna push my hip actively out, keep my whole pelvic girdle still, and then I'm gonna kick forward for that pendulum and then kick it all the way back. So as I'm kicking, nothing should be moving through my hips, hopefully, and I'm just focusing on that motion coming from my leg. Really building the, the power in the bottom here. Three more to go. Good. And when you are back to the foot bar, turn the toes to the ceiling, bend into your frog, and then push it away. Now we have been lying down this whole class, so I will let you know um, the lying down's coming to an end. I know my clients hate hearing that, so we're going to be standing up here in a little bit. So just enjoy these last few things laying down. So when we're laying down, it's really, we have a, no, a nice support for the spine. So it's a great position to work in. And I do like to continue to work um, laying down quite a bit in my classes because it gives you the support you need to find the right position so that when you get into those harder positions, you can find your right alignment. Let's do one more time and then turn the foot back to the front. We're going to sweep it forward, take it up to the ceiling and then press it down. Nice big circles stirring that leg bone in the hip socket, getting some flexibility and mobility through the hip joint. Again, no movement or rocking through the pelvis. Everything's still from the head to the tailbone. Just stirring that leg. Nice job, last two to go. When you get back to the foot bar, it's time to switch your direction. So come up first, go forward second, and then pull back to the foot bar third. So you're just lifting up and forward and back. Now everyone's range of motion is a little different, so it's not really about how it looks as much as about how it feels. So you make this as small or as little as you need to make so that you feel the work and you're not um, moving at a range of motion that isn't appropriate for you. Good, last three. And two. And one. Awesome job. Go ahead and bend the knee in, and we'll take that strap, put it back on the peg, and bring yourself all the way up. Now you hopefully have a box handy somewhere. I didn't mention that in the beginning, but we will use the box. I have mine down here. I'm gonna go ahead and put the box on. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is just slide that foot bar back down to the down position. Um, already on the blue spring, I'm gonna stay on that same spring and come to tabletop on the box. So I'm in this tabletop position. Hopefully I've got a straight line from the crown of the head to the tailbone. My shoulders are square, my hips are square. I'm going to pick up the right strap and reach that right arm to the side and I'm going to do a straight arm pullback with that arm. So again, what you want to look for here is that the shoulders are staying still and down the back. So one thing would be a rounding of the shoulders, which we want to stay away from. So you'll try to lift up through the crown of the head, draw your shoulders down your back and lengthen your spine. Now you have a little tiny bend in that left elbow as well, just so you're not locking out the joint. So it's just a tiny little release. So you're working the muscle and not the joint. So we're gonna do two more times with the straight arm pull back and then hold it back into your tricep. So keep that elbow really high, keep it right in line with your hip as you extend and bend the right arm. Three more to go. 
and two and one. Now take the hand down for a second. I'm going to slide my left leg over kind of right where the um, right leg was. And then I'm going to take this strap all the way back and put it on my foot. So I'm going to put that strap on the right foot, take my hands back to the box, and then send my right leg towards the floor. So now I have the strap in the right foot, my right leg's to the floor. I'm going to kick it all the way back and bring it forward. So this is a repeat of what we did laying on our side. So now we're working on stability here in a little bit more challenging position because there's nothing supporting us except our hands and one knee. So we have three little points of support and we're trying to keep everything nice and still as we move that right leg through space. Good. Try to get all the way up to hip height if you can. Two more to go. And then I want you to hold the next one back there and then bend the knee in and then kick the leg back. Doing a little donkey kick. Bend and push it back. Good. Last two to go. And one more. Nice work. Now I'm going to take the strap off the foot. And then I'm just going to set that foot on the side of the box. So my foot is resting on my reformer on the side of the box. I'm going to pick up both of the straps and come into a high kneeling position. So in this position, I'm reaching the crown of the head to the ceiling. I'm drawing my ribs down, pulling my shoulders back, just taking both arms and pressing them back and then bringing them forward. Now it's really easy to start using momentum and just letting the arms kind of fling forward and back. I want to isolate. So that's where I'm going to get a little bit more work is if I try to control not only pressing back, but I try to slow down my release forward. Good. Now again, I'm trying really hard to slide my shoulders down my back. I'm trying really hard to keep my ribs drawing in, trying to lengthen through the crown of my head. And then my right leg's pushing a little bit into the box just for some stability. And that's helping me with this balance because this is definitely not an easy balance one. So you guys are doing really good. Let's go four more. And last one here. Reach the arms in front of you. Now turn your palms to face each other. We're going to open out to more of a T position and then bring it back forward to close. So still working the back. Again, I love to work the back. We, as a society in general, have very weak backs. You can tell in our posture. I took my kids to camp today, and I think everyone I saw walking down the road was like this on their phone. So we want to try to counterbalance that. Draw the shoulders back, lift the chest, open the heart, building our posture. The better the posture, the better your breath is, the better you feel. So you want to always work on that back. Last three to go, guys. And one more. All right, let's do it from the top on the left side. So put your right strap back on the peg. Come into the center with your left knees on left and right knee square, right hand on the box. Your left hand has the strap. Now make sure you're not dropping the shoulder. Send it down your back, and then you'll start to pull that arm straight back and forward. Now I like to gaze kind of right down to my headrest, and that keeps my neck in alignment. So I do see a lot of people looking forward um, to kind of see where they're going, but then that kind of tweaks the neck a little bit. So if you can look down, you're always thinking of what position is going to keep my spine nice and neutral. So if you look down, your neck is just a natural extension of the rest of your spine. Now hold the arm back and do your tricep. Bend the elbow and straighten the elbow. Four more to go. All 
Almost there, you guys. Two more, and then finish one more really strong. Last one's as good as the first one, and then rest. Slide your right knee a little bit over. Take that strap, slide it all the way back, and put it onto the left foot. Once you have it on the foot, hands go back to the corner of the box. Left foot goes down as if you're reaching the floor. Now again, try not to let your hip drop. Pull it back up so they're square, and then push the legs straight back and forward. Again, my shoulders are down my back, elbows slightly bent. I'm looking straight down again, keeping the back of the neck long. You've got three more to go. One more, and then we'll hold it back. And I like to really flex my foot on this donkey kick. So I bend my knee in and then push through the heel, finding that connection from the glute to the heel. Trying to control the motion instead of letting the springs do the work for me. I'm using the springs. Slow and steady, moving through molasses. Last three. Last two, and one more strong one to finish. Bring it home. Now again, we're gonna set that left foot onto the side so that leg is, shin is hugging into the box. Go ahead and pick up both of those straps and let's set your shoulders down your back. Lift your chest, lift your chin, and then pull the arms straight back and release to the sides. Now you'll actually find it's harder if you stop right beside you so if you go back and then stop right in line with your hips, that's more challenging. If I let my arms go forward, then I can just use a lot of momentum and do this big range of motion. But if I can control it, I'm gonna get a lot more out of the exercise. So pushing straight back and stopping right at my hips. Find that little pause. Pause, press, pause, release. And the breath helps with that as well. All right, you guys, two more to go. And last one. Good, second exercise, palm face each other. You're gonna open out to that T and then release it back. Really focus on your wrists as well. You wanna make sure that your wrists stay straight. This is an easy exercise to let your wrists bend, but you wanna keep that wrist really strong no bending or movement through the wrist. Three more to go. And last one. Alrighty, good job. Put those straps back onto the pegs, come all the way off. All right, if you're alone like me and you don't have anyone to help you get the straps, I'm gonna show you a way to get into this next one. I'm still on the blue spring. We haven't changed that in a while. Um, so blue spring on, grab both of your straps. You're gonna lunge a little forward and then grab onto the side of the box. So I've got my hands on either side of the box and I'm on the outside of my spring. So I'm way out here to the side. I'm gonna, just gonna take my body and just slide my body onto the box. And I like my chest off the box, and then once I'm there, I'm gonna let my arms rest to the side. Now, I have a tower behind me and a wall, so for me, I have to bend the knees, because I'm pretty tall. If you don't have those things, feel free to keep the legs straight, but that's why I'm gonna be doing some bending and straightening. So in this position, I can have my legs straight. I'm gonna do a bicep curl, bend my knees, reach my arms over the head, and then circle the arms out, giving myself a little extension from the spine. So I'm gonna dry, tricep bend, press, and circle. So this kind of reminds me of a swimming motion. Over the head, and then lifting like I'm coming up and out of the water. So exhale as you press, inhale as you come up, and extend. 
Now be very careful that the extension comes from your back, not your neck. So even though you're extending up, I want you to look down, keep the back of the neck long. The other thing you can think about here is push your pubic bone into the mat. And that's going to help you lift even higher. It's also going to put your back in a good position to keep your back safe. So I'm lifting up, extending the spine, and bringing it back. Three. And two. And one. Good, find that little extension. Now if I can slide my feet on the inside of the ropes, bring my hands back to the box, slide myself all the way up, and put my feet on the box. That's one way to transition. It's not easy. Um, so you can also just get off and then have a seat. So whichever way you want to do it, find yourself in this position, straddling the box, sliding the legs into the box, and we'll do a little bit of circles. So I want you to reach the arms all the way up over the head and then circle them out and around. So nice, just nice big circles up and then out and around. So my goal here is to not overextend the shoulders. Because I have weight here, I don't want to go back. So what you don't want to do is this. You don't want to let the arms go so far back that there's a pull in the shoulders. I want to keep my arms forward in my peripheral vision the whole time. So I should be able to see my hands going up, hands going out, and hands coming down. Got two more in that direction. And then we're going to switch the direction, which will be a little challenging, but more so than the other way. So exhale as you go up, inhale as you come down. Good. So I'm sitting really tall. My ribs are drawing in. My belly button's drawing in. I'm sitting as tall as I can, like, again, that energy through the crown of the head up to the ceiling. And I can see my hands the whole time that I'm doing it. Right, just three more to go. On your last one, I want you to stay at the top. Now, two options. You can stay straight up. This is a lot of weight to be holding. If you need to pitch your hips uh, forward a little bit and hinge forward, you can do that as well. So what you don't want to see is a, big, a bend in the ribs and this arching. So pull your ribs in, pull your abs in, and then you're going to bend and straighten your arms for a tricep press. Now, guys, I know this is not easy, but you can do it. Just do as many as you can with good form. We're working up to about eight of them. Doesn't mean you have to do eight today. Last two to go. One more to go. Nice job. Go ahead and release the arms and give yourself a little rest. Okay, we're going to put the straps um, back onto the pegs. You can slide off the box. Um, one more thing to go to finish. So we are almost there, and this should feel really good. This is going to be mermaid. So put that box away, just out of your way. Put your foot bar back up to mid position. Still on a blue spring. I could probably teach every class on a blue spring if it weren't for leg work. Literally my favorite spring of all time. All right, so we are on blue. You have your left hand, and it's a little forward, forward of the shoulder. So you don't want it back here, again, extending. You want it a little bit in front. You're going to take your right arm out to the side and just push out and take a lovely stretch, leaning all the way over towards the foot bar. And then inhale and bring it back up. Exhale, lean and press. And then inhale back up. Your third time, I want you to stay there. Just exhale, lean and press. You're going to stay in this stretch for just a second. And then moving into your second stretch, you're going to thread the needle. So the right arm's going to go under. Now, based on your flexibility, you could hold somewhere on the carriage. You might even be able to hold the wood and give yourself a little traction. So it's like you're pulling that right arm towards you, pushing the left arm away from you. Keeping, again, that neck just an extension of the spine, getting a nice spiral twist. 
And I hope this feels as good for you as it does for me. I really love this one. And then you're gonna release, take both hands onto the foot bar a little bit wide and then just let your whole chest melt into the springs. And I always notice I'm always somewhere holding tension. So just take a second to wherever that tension is, just let it go and give yourself a moment to just rest and stretch and release. Coming all the way back up, bring the carriage all the way home. Now this is one that won't look like much, but hopefully it feels like a lot. My right hand's gonna be pulling towards me. My left hand's gonna be pushing away from me and I'm gonna use that push and pull to twist over my left shoulder and get a nice spinal twist. And my right leg is actually pushing as much as it can into the shoulder box. But because I'm pulling with that right hand, I'm not going anywhere. So again, right hand pulls, left hand pushes, right leg pushes, and I get a really good twist. Ringing out that spine, and then release. I always like to counter stretch, so bring your hands on the shoulder blocks, sit really tall, and then you're almost like pushing your shoulder blocks to your left. So I'm really pushing my shoulder blocks towards my left as I twist in opposition to the right. With every spinal twist, find your length first and then find a deeper twist on your exhale. So if you use your breath with your, with your stretching, your body's gonna respond better. So you find your breath on the inhale and then on your exhales, when you try to move just a little bit deeper into your stretch. And then slowly bring yourself all the way back. Okay, let's turn around. The easiest way to do that is turning towards your shoulder block. So I'm just gonna spin myself around. Now my left leg is up against the shoulder blocks. My right hand is on the foot bar. Your left arm is out, palm up. Three times we're gonna push all the way out leaning all the way towards the foot bar, getting that big, deep stretch through the side. And then bringing it back in with a big inhale. And then again, exhale, press, reach, extend. And then back up. And one more time. This time I want you to hold it, so take it out and hold. Thread the needle, left arm goes underneath. If you can grab the carriage, that's great. Maybe grab the wood, pull with that left hand so you're pulling yourself into this twist. You're pushing with your right arm, just giving that back a little release. And this whole series of stretching is just a great opportunity to breathe. So big, deep inhales to the nose, big, strong exhales through the mouth. Next stretch, left hand comes to the foot bar. Move your right hand over a little bit and then just drop your chest into the springs. And then opposition will come all the way up. Again, this time bring your carriage home now your right hand's gonna push into the foot bar at the same time your left hand's gonna pull towards you and you're gonna twist yourself over your right shoulder. Push your left leg into the shoulder blocks. I don't know if you're enjoying these spinal twists as much as I am, but I hope you are because they feel so good. Try to take a big inhale, lift the heart up. Every exhale you're twisting, releasing. Give me just one more big inhale, one more big exhale, and then we're gonna unwind, turn to the other side, take your hands to the sides of the shoulder blocks, first find your length, so spine really long, and then push your shoulder blocks to the right, twist your spine to the left. And then 
go ahead and release. I'm going to turn all the way around to face you so we can finish the class. You did amazing. That was really great. So let's finish with just a big inhale a few times. So take an inhale, roll the shoulders up, bring them back, and set them down. Do that two more times. Big shoulder roll up, back, and down, and last one up, back, and down. Nice job today. Thank you so much for joining me, and I can't wait to work out with you again.